Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. I have no qualms whatsoever about making another DML and power upgrade video, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. I realized how many MV machines I was making, and I was like, oh no, will my power possibly be enough? And so I decided that I needed to upgrade it. And so I decided that I was going to double the amount of power I was making. So by the end of today, we'll have 57,408 RF per tick, which will be pretty great, and which means I'll be able to support 112 MV machines working together at once. However, to do this, I need to support double the amount of DML simulation chambers, which is going to require doubling my polymer clay setup. Thankfully, I've done the calculations and figured out what exactly we need to do. And the most unique bit of this episode, and the reason I think you should stick around, is because we're going to be making a multi-smelter in our first Tier 3 circuits. I want to double this alloy smelter, which means I'll be using 0 0.46666 clay or pulsating dust per second, which means I need to use 0 0.46 quartz per second. For that, I need, at most, 2.24 glass per second. How am I going to do that when these furnaces are so slow? Rather than make three furnaces, which I would find extremely silly, I'm going to make a multi-smelter. An MV multi-smelter with cooper nickel coils, that'll make a little more sense later, can create 2.5 per second of any item you smelt in it. A multi-smelter, which requires three HV circuits, can be used in a multi-block pattern to make um, a multi-block structure that smelts a large amount of items at once. And like it says in this description here, different tiers of coils provide speed boosts and energy efficiency gains. To find out more information about the different power tiers of the multi-smelter, you can go onto the Omnifactor Discord to find a particular link, or I'll post this link in the YouTube description below, which has a spreadsheet um, and a bunch of other useful information about how the multi-smelter works and how to upgrade it. With 6 aluminium plates, 6 integrated circuits, 6 resistors, 6 capacitors, 12 electronic processors, and 48 fine electrum wires, I'll be able to make my 3 HV circuits. Slowly. The other strange thing we're going to need for the multi-smelter is something called annealed copper. Now, how on earth are we going to get that? It takes oxygen in a blast furnace with copper. To get the oxygen, I'm going to electrolyze bauxite. Eventually, I'll make a system that's making oxygen straight from air, but for now, the main thing I need to do is just to electrolyze 39 bauxite dust, which I've got whole lots of to get oxygen. Slowly as it may be, it is going. I'm going to make an iron drum to hold the XX oxygen, because I'm going to need a bunch of it anyway. That, or I'm just going to make 11 annealed copper. In fact, I think that might be the way to go. Making a drum, anyway. While I wait, I'm going to upgrade the CEF for MV that I have over here from 4 times to 16 times so that I can create the multi-smelter right here. And a long line of power. Unfortunately, you cannot fill drums by clicking them onto a fluid. I'll just use this steel drum and put it in in order to get out, hopefully, my 11,000. Why does Phenol keep entering my input hatch? There, much better. I had to break it and replace it. What a strange bug. Now I'll put 11 copper into this blast furnace and start the process. Very quick. Rubberizing two anneal copper wires. And finally, without further ado, a multi-smelter, which we'll place right here. And put an input bus here and start filling it up with the heat-proof machine casings like we did for the blast furnace before. And add our cooper nickel coils and our output bus and fill it up with the last of the heat-proof machine casings and see it complete. Now we'll place down our new alloy smelter and our new chemical reactor, excuse me, I mean place down our new chemical- Oh no, I made a terrible mistake. We'll place a limited item filter on this alloy smelter with the same quantities as the previous one. And then filter this chemical reactor on quartz and then with a fluid filter on um, resonant ender, I believe, yep. And then filter the multi-smelter on sand. And watch it smelt sand with wondrous speed. Uh, it can smelt up to 16 at once, so what matters is our ability to extract. So hopefully that goes pretty well. You'll also notice that I have a 1024 conduit binder. That's the wonder of a cobble works. Anyway, we'll extract always active from this multi-smelter, and then we'll have much better glass production, which means I can get rid of this silly diamond furnace once and for all. Now that we have doubled the carrying capacity, I have no qualms adding four new simulation chambers to my line. But because that's actually a lot of work, that's actually not what I'm going to show you this episode, although I will tell you what the data models are going to be. They're going to be two Enderman models and two Shulker models. What we're actually going to do is isolate the extraction part of this system from the network, because we have a problem. I want to distribute pristine witch matter to this glowstone and this redstone crater on a round robin mode. Unfortunately, probably due to concerns for efficiency, Enter.io's round robin system doesn't work when you have two different types of items flowing out of a, of, a, of a machine. In this case, this machine has two types of items, which matter and overworldian matter. So only the redstone thing was getting filled. What, Jonathan, you ask, is the solution? 
we are going to extract everything into a single drawer system. It will be full of drawers for all of the pristine matters and also the overworldian, hellish, and extraterrestrial matters. And we're going to extract individually from each drawer so we can round robin. You can attach a bunch of drawers to each other in a single network and insert into all of them using one block if you use something called the drawer controller, which has a pretty simple recipe and I'll make it right now. We're going to make a chest transporter so that we can move our barrels around. Shift right click on a drawer like so, you'll get jump boost, mining fatigue, hunger, and slowness. And then we can shift right click at the orientation we want and it'll place it down quite neatly. You'll notice I have isolated the conduit systems from the left drawers and the right drawers. The left drawers will connect to do whatever we want them to do, basically in the main Ender IO network, but all these right drawers will be attached only to themselves. And then I'll place one type of each matter into a drawer, then I'll make what's called a drawer key. If you right click a drawer with a drawer key, it will lock the drawer so that only that item can go into it. This is important because if you empty the entire drawer, it might become empty and allow any item into it. By locking it, it will only ever allow conduit binder, for example, into this drawer. We can lock and unlock an entire system by right-clicking on a drawer controller. We can now see that all of the drawers are locked. Now we're going to isolate the extraction system from the DMLs from the rest of the network, and we're going to cause it to insert directly into this drawer controller. Funny enough, you can actually see the entire inventory from the drawer controller, so if I hadn't been listening to the previous video to ensure that it went well, I would have been able to record you watching all of these pristine drawers filling up quite nicely. Now I'm going to disconnect the insertion system for the loot fabricators from the rest of the network, and connect it like so. And then set every drawer to extract always active round robin. If I could be bothered to do the work, eventually I will make this conduit probe, and that will allow me to copy the settings from one conduit and paste them on many others very quickly, as opposed to having to press all these buttons over and over again. Luckily there's only 11 times 2 buttons, which is 22, so it's going to be fine. Just so we can believe that it works, let's watch this witch data model start to flood out. Yep, and it's going to flood out, and we want to make sure it round robins, and it is in fact round robining into my redstone and glowstone. I am very happy. Don't forget, try to avoid loops in your Ender IO conduit network. Alright, now that that issue has been fixed by this store system, which should be expandable, it's time for the final quick project of this episode, which is to expand my power system. I've made 6 numismatic dynamos, 6 reinforced conversion kits, 6 lapidary calibration upgrades, and 30 fuel catalyzers. This took a while. It took like 2 hours last night. Again, the benefit of super shorts. We'll set all these item filters to diamond. And we'll set all our numismatic dynamos in this area right here. Conveniently, the world's orientation is such that I can just right click and they'll all flip, which I find really nice. Again, avoid loops. And I can set these to insert with impunity because I haven't put in the lapidary calibration upgrade that lets them all have diamonds inside them. No loops in your conduit network. Enjoy with me a cacophony. And another one. Just kidding, I'm not going to make you hear all of that. And then I'll hook up some more numismatic dynamos. And behold, our newfangled power system. I can use this for, like I said, 112 MV machines. And technically, you know, I'm already starting to, to fill up on those. So I, I'm glad that we're doing this because this is going to help us a lot in the future just to run so many things. Now that we're out of that power interlude, next episode we'll be able to start creating polyethylene, which is going to be a fun situation. I'm mainly going to focus on the part where we create ethylene, but probably I'll make polyethylene and polyvinyl chloride too, and we'll be able to use those to automate refined circuits, and that's going to be great. Funny enough, getting refined circuits is the end of the early game, and we're going to do some crazy things after that. So I'm very excited to see what goes on um, as we proceed into the next stage of Omnifactory, but for now, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.